The federal government's $1 billion solar sunshot program is now officially open for submissions. The program is aimed at significantly boosting the manufacturing of solar panels in Australia. While one in three households are using solar energy, only 1% of the supply is made here. Most of them are made in China. The initiative is also meant to create quality jobs and a more resilient supply chain. Well, cybersecurity researchers claim around 20% of the world's solar power output has been vulnerable to a cyber attack after experts were able to gain access to solar panel systems used overseas and in Australia. Now, for more on this, I am joined by Bogdan Vodazatu, who is the Director of Threat Research and Reporting at Bitdefender. Bogdan, thank you for joining me. Can you start by telling us what did your researchers discover? Good afternoon. Uh, we discovered a series of vulnerabilities in a cloud uh, infrastructure that helps people get connected to uh, their own inverters at home. So uh, what, uh, uh, what happened was that we were able to hijack devices that would not belong to us. Uh, and we uh, started uh, looking at how big this infrastructure is. Uh, soon after that, we realized that we were we had a potential access to 2.2 million installations, uh, ranging from uh, home setups with one or two solar panels up until large solar parks that produce significant energy. Uh, in total, we're speaking about 195 gigawatts of solar power production that we had uh, discretionary access, um, uh, even if we were not the uh, owners of those installations. And so how were you able to get access to those systems? What had actually, what was the problem? We are cybersecurity researchers and we focused on the Internet of Things security. Uh, we normally analyze uh, devices like smart speakers, uh, uh, smart TVs, uh, IPTV cameras, and uh, anything else that starts with smart. Uh, this time we uh, looked into an inverter um, a device that one of our colleagues had at home. Uh, and we started poking with it just out of the force of habit. Um, we realized that the way the inverter connects to the internet is vulnerable. So um, uh, the cloud would not uh, verify if we are the legitimate owner or not. There was a shortcut that would allow us to uh, log in as pretty much any user on this 2.2 million client platform and take control of these devices. So these devices are uh, made out of uh, three uh, important uh, pillars, uh, building blocks. Uh, a solar setup is made of solar panels that uh, sit on the home and uh, get the sun, sun's energy. Uh, the inverter, that's the brain of the setup. It, uh, it understands how to convert the energy and what to do with it. The battery pack, which is an optional asset, uh, but most of the inverters can pump the solar energy into uh, the battery. And uh, a device that's uh, uh, called a controller, a dongle, that uh, joins everything uh, with the internet. And um, uh, this is the culprit. Um, uh, this device uh, is able to communicate with the internet and uh, the, uh, the, the larger distribution platform can contact the inverter itself uh, in, in exchange. So we were able to intercept this communication, impersonate as uh, users and connect with all uh, the uh, inverters that were on the network. If these systems had been accessed by cyber criminals, and I should make the point that we are not suggesting they were, uh, what sorts of things, what sorts of harm could potentially be caused? Normally, when you're hacking into an IoT device, you get into a person's home and that's it. You're exposing their privacy. You, you would be able to uh, maybe listen into conversations or watch them uh, on an IPTV camera. This time, though, uh, the situation is a little bit more dire because these devices are connected not only to the Internet, but also to the national grid. And uh, uh, this is a, 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 a very uh, serious situation because these inverters pump energy into uh, the national grid. So uh, a cyber criminal with access to uh, an inverter would be able to tweak these uh, uh, grids, th these inverter settings, override the grid and uh, start desynchronizing it. Uh, normally when inverters pump energy into the grid, they do so on a heartbeat. Uh, you know, there's this sine wave that 
uh, goes up and down that we usually associate with uh, uh, electrical energy. Um, all devices that produce uh, electricity on the network are synchronized to this sine wave. This is the heartbeat of the network. If we're pumping energy at a faster or a slower pace than that sine wave, we desynchronize the network. When this happens, the network uh, becomes stressed and understands that it's in danger, so it has to disconnect parts of the network to uh, be able uh, to stay uh, up and running. So uh, one of the most important things that cyber criminals could do was to desynchronize uh, the output, the input of uh, uh, electricity to cause this uh, unexpected disconnect, which will lead to blackouts. Uh, in addition to that, uh, and on a, a smaller scale, uh, cyber criminals could be able to tamper with the inverter settings for it to, rather than pump, uh, current into the network to absorb power from the network and charge batteries or uh, um, not do anything at all. In this case, the uh, cyber criminals will be able to uh, take out more energy into the grid that uh, it's being produced, thus putting stress on the energy and increasing the um, uh, legitimate owner's uh, electricity bill. It's pretty scary stuff. Thank you so much for sharing your research with us. And I will make that point again, that there's no suggestion that these solar panel systems were accessed by cyber criminals or that any solar panels in Australia were affected.